Before I begin, I just want to give a quick reminder that customers should base their purchasing decisions on products and services that are generally available. Hi everyone, my name is Aditya and I'm a lead developer advocate here at Salesforce. In the previous video, you've seen how to customize the Salesforce user experience with just clicks. But it is rare that you build an app just to store and retrieve data. There is definitely some automation that you build in to simplify manual tasks. So in this video, let's see how you can automate your business process using Salesforce with just clicks. The automation capabilities in Salesforce range from no code to pro code. In the no code and low code category, you have Salesforce flows, which is quite a powerful tool with a drag and drop interface to create your automations and custom wizards without writing any code. And then in the pro code category, you have Apex and triggers about which you'll learn soon. In most of the projects, it is almost always a combination of low code and pro code tools. First, let's talk about flows. To truly understand the power of flows, let's look at three use cases. The first use case, let's say I have a requirement where I want users to book a test drive for a vehicle. The test drive object is already there, but I want a fancy UI and a wizard based experience to guide me through the process of booking a test drive. So from setup, I navigate to flows and I click on new flow. Here you can see the different kinds of flows that you can create. First, a screen flow which is used to build a wizard, a concept which is very similar to how you would create fields in Salesforce by going through different screens by clicking next, next and finish. That can be achieved using the screen flow. The next type of flow is a record triggered flow, which automatically runs in the background whenever a record is created or updated. It's kind of like a database trigger, but without you having to write any code for it. Then you have scheduled flows that are automations that run at a particular point in time. There are other types as well, but you can learn about them later. Except for screen flow, all the other flows run in the background. When it comes to screen flows, they can be shown on app builder pages or even quick actions that you've seen in the previous video. Now coming back to our first use case, that is the test drive one. Since it needs a UI, I'm going to choose the screen flow. In the flow canvas, you can start adding different elements to build a flow chart of your process. So here are the different elements that you can add to this flow chart or flow. First is a screen element that obviously shows some UI. Next you have action that performs some action in the background like calling a custom code written using Apex or calling standard actions like sending an email, etc. In a flowchart, you of course also have logic where you have loops, decision branches, or even store variables to use them later in the flow. So here you have elements for all of those operations as well. Finally, you have elements that let you interact with Salesforce data, like querying records, creating, updating or deleting them. For booking a test drive, I'm going to add a new screen component. Give it a label and I can configure the available navigation controls, whether or not I want the pause button to be shown or not, things like that. Now within the screen, I can drag and drop the different input and output elements to build a form. These are shown on the left hand side very similar to how an app builder looks. Let me add a display text to show the text. Please enter your information. Next, I'm going to add a few text fields to capture the name and phone number of the customer. And mark both of them as required. And that's all we need on the first screen. Next, 
I'll create another screen to select a car. Here is where it gets interesting. I want to show a drop down that should list all the cars present in the vehicle object. So first, I'll drag and drop a pick list. Give it a label, mark it as required. And in the choices section, I'll choose a new resource with the type record choice set. What this allows me to do is define an object to get the data from and then show it in the drop down. I'll choose the vehicle object. And in the filter section, I want to add a filter to show only the available cars. Notice how the drop downs here automatically show me the relevant fields and pick list values. So everything here is context aware. Now from the list of records that is retrieved, I specify which field should be shown as the drop down label and what is the corresponding value for that label. And that's it. Without writing a single line of code, I was able to create a drop down of available cars to show in the UI. And that's all for screen number two. In the next screen, I want to show a fancy UI to book a slot. Since it is a complex one, I've created a lightning web component for it. And I can drag and drop it from the custom components section over here. Now that I have all the information I need, I need to now create the test drive record for which I'm going to add the create records element to the canvas. Again, I give it a label and I choose which object to create. Here it is test drive. And then I set the field values. So first is the customer name field. And when assigning a value to this name field, notice how all the elements that we've created in the flow till now are shown. In the screen components section specific, notice the name field that we added. So just choosing it will take care of mapping the value from the input field that is name to the field on the test drive object. Similarly, I will map all the other fields and click on save. Now error handling is an important aspect of every design. There might be instances where the slot booking may fail because maybe the slot has become unavailable by the time we go ahead and click the save button or something. Maybe there is a huge demand for that slot. So we need to check if the booking is successful or not and then show a message to the user accordingly. For that, Let's add the decision element and give it a label. Within the decision, you can now define the outcomes of this decision. Now I create a new outcome that is booked. The outcome is booked if the test drive ID from the test drive create action record is not empty. Now, once you save, you can now see that a new branch is created in your flowchart. In the booked branch, I'll create a screen that shows a success message. In the other branch, I'll create another screen that shows an error message. And finally, I save the test drive flow. And once I do that, I can run it right from here to test it. So here is our first screen. Let me click next without entering any details. And because these fields are required, it shows an error. So now let me fill in the details. And now I click next. So here I can select a car. Notice how the drop down includes all the available cars. I select one and click next. 
So this is the lightning web component that lets me select a time slot. I choose one and when I click next, I get a success message, which means the test drive record is created successfully. So now if I go back and refresh the record page, I can now see that there is one test drive for this vehicle. And if I go into the details, you can see that these are the same details that I've entered in the flow. Now that my flow is ready, I can create a new quick action. And add it to the vehicle detail page. Or I can add it to a page like the home page by dragging the flow component and then choosing the book test drive flow. So that was use case one, which was not technically an automation. So in the second use case, let's look at an automation requirement where the range of a vehicle must change depending on the price. And here are the conditions. So whenever the price is below 10K, it is a short range vehicle between 10K to 25K, it is medium and so on. For this, I'll create a record triggered flow. I configure when this flow must be triggered and select when a record is created or updated. And then I select before a record is saved. I then choose the object, which is the vehicle object. And since this flow has to run for all the records, I don't need any filters. So I just remove them. Next, I create a decision element to configure the outcomes based on record price. So one of the first outcomes is less than 10,000. And I give the filter condition saying, the record price should be less than 10,000. Similarly, I create all the other outcomes. In each branch, I then create an assignment element to assign a value to a field. So here I assign the value short range to the record field. So here is how a completed flow would look like different branches for different conditions and assignment statements for each of those branches. Now I go back to the record page of a long range vehicle. And if I change the price to 8K, notice the range automatically gets updated to short range. Now in my third and final use case, I want to send a push notification to the user's mobile phones every day at 10 o'clock in the morning. So for that, I can create a scheduled flow. First, I will set the schedule, meaning that from when the schedule flow should start running. So I'll choose a date and in time I'll choose 10 a.m. Next, I'll choose the frequency. That is how often this flow should run. Since I need to send notifications daily, I will choose daily. And this time I'm going to add a few actions. So whenever you select an action, you can see that there are a bunch of out of the box actions that you get. And if the business logic you want to run is complex, you can create custom code using Apex and call that from the flow. So here I've created an Apex method for delivering web push notifications. So I'll just select and use that. And that's how easy it is to automate your business processes using flows. So key takeaway, just because your business process is complex, doesn't mean you discard flow entirely and start writing a bunch of Apex. Your automation can be a combination of flow and Apex. Now let's take a look at another type of automation. Rather, it's a subset I would say, which is called approval processes. 
And like the name suggests, you can use it to take approvals on various records. So here is a use case. So consider there is a sales rep who wants to give a discount on a car. It's very rare that sales reps can give how much of a discount that they want. So what they would do is they would enter the discount amount and then request an approval from their manager. And once the manager approves, only then they can give that discount. So let's see how to build this using approval processes. I've created two new fields, one to capture the discount percentage and one to capture the approval status. From setup, let's now go to approval processes. Let's select the vehicle object and click create new approval process. Give it a name and define the entry criteria. That is, when should this approval process be triggered? I say, when the discount percentage is not blank, only then use it. Finally, select who the approver is. For this use case, I will select the user's manager. And then click save. So this is the skeleton of the approval process. But there are a couple of more things to do. First, look at the initial submission actions. If you see, lock record is added by default, meaning that once a record is submitted for approval, you cannot edit it. You can add more actions. Here, I want to update the approval status field to pending once the record is submitted for approval. So I select field update, give it a name, select the approval status field and assign the value pending. Next, you have approval steps. In our use case, it is enough that if the manager approves the record. But let's say there is another use case where, let's say if the discount is greater than 30%, along with the manager, the sales head should also approve it. In that case, you will create two steps. One, to get your manager's approval. And the other one, once your manager approves it, it should go to the sales head for approval. So those are those two steps. But in our use case, it's just one. Next, you have the final approval and rejection actions, meaning that what should happen once a record is approved and what should happen once the record is not approved. There are predefined actions for them already, but even here, I'm going to add some field updates. So in the final approval actions, I'm going to add a field update to mark the approval status as approved. I also want the record to be unlocked after approval so that I can edit the record in the future. So I edit the record lock action and choose unlock. In the final rejection actions, again, I'm going to update the approval status to rejected. And that's it. I will activate this process. Now back on the vehicle detail page, I've added the submit for approval button, which is a standard quick action. And I've also added the approval history related list to the page. You already know how to do this from the previous video. So now let me test the approval process. I add a discount percentage and I click on submit for approval. Notice how the status automatically changes to pending and how the approval history shows that a step one is assigned to my manager. Now I log in as the manager and if I click on step one, I can see the approve and reject buttons. So I'll go ahead and just approve the record. And now as a sales rep, I can see that the status has changed to approved. Now you might get a question. What if a sales rep manually updates the status field to approved on their own? That is where security comes into picture. You'll learn all about it in the last video. Ideally, you would make the approval status field read only for the sales rep. You can do that using page layouts or profiles, but that's a discussion for later. 
our approval process is now done but now depending on the approved discount i want to calculate the final price so how do i do that i can simply create a formula field that calculates the final price so i go back to fields and relationships of the vehicle object and i create a new field with the type formula i give it a name and specify that the formula returns a currency value now here is where i define the formula based on which the final price is calculated let me click on advanced formula and here you can see the various prebuilt functions you can use when building your formula you can explore all of them later but here is a logic i'm planning to use if the discount status is approved then calculate the final price based on the existing price field and discount values if not use the existing price value so basically it is a conditional formula with a bit of multiplication in between so from the functions list i choose the if function and it creates a syntax for me and then i can use the insert field button to find and add the fields that i want to use so this is how my completed formula looks like if the pick list value of the field discount approval status is approved then return this calculated value if not return the original price so once done i can check the syntax and here it shows that it is all good and then i save the field now on the record detail page notice that the final price is now being calculated as per the discount and on another record without a discount the final price is same as the price even if i add a discount percentage it does not recalculate the final price because the status is not yet approved before we wrap up this video there is one more requirement we have to address where we want to make sure no one can enter a discount of greater than 50% for this purpose we use validation rules so back in the object manager i choose validation rules click new give it a name and in the error condition formula i give the condition that should throw an error notice you have functions here as well just like your formula field so here i create the formula that is if discount percent greater than 0.5 then throw this error message and i give the error message i can then decide where to show this error message whether on top of the page or near a field i will select the discount field here because it's a good user experience to show the error message at the field causing it and that's it now if i go back to the record and enter a percentage that is greater than 50 you can see an error message prevents me from saving this record so let's quickly recap what we have just seen first we created a screen flow to create a wizard like experience to book a test drive next we created a record triggered flow to update one field based on the other third we created a scheduled flow in order to send push notifications at a particular point in time then we have created an approval process wherein a manager can approve discounts and in order to show the final amount we have created a formula field and then we created a validation rule to prevent discounts greater than 50% and that's the end of the video i hope you liked it if you did please let me know your thoughts and reactions in the comment section on youtube if you have any questions put them in the comment section as well and i'll answer them for you this video is hosted on the salesforce developers youtube channel which has a ton of great content like intro videos deep dives quick takes code live sessions and many more on various topics on salesforce that can help you level up your skills so please go ahead 
and hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell icon to get notifications whenever we roll out new content.